Betelgeuse was the 11th brightest star in the night sky and the second brightest in the constellation of Orion, only outshone by Rigel. It has a distinctive reddish glow and is known as a variable star. Its magnitude can vary from 0.0 to plus 1.3, and that is the widest range of any first magnitude star. In recent months, the star has significantly dimmed, leading some to speculate that it might go supernova anytime soon. Others claim that this will not happen for another 100,000 years. This star has its own story to tell in an electric and plasma universe. Betelgeuse is classified as a red supergiant. It is one of the largest visible stars to the naked eye. By comparison, the surface of Betelgeuse would extend all the way to Jupiter. It is thought to be about 640 light years away, but obtaining an accurate distance reading has been extremely difficult. They are able to use parallax measurements to determine the distance, and this involves measuring the change of the position of the star based on our motion around the Sun, and this causes the star to appear to move slightly on one side versus the other. And in 1920, parallax measurements yielded a distance of only 180 light years. Since then, the measurements have ranged with some as high as 1300 light years away. It is now thought that it is actually located some 600 light years from Earth. It has long been known that the brightness of this star changes. Between 1836 and 1852, Sir John Herschel published his observations. He had noticed that in October 1837, and again in November 1839, it outshone Rigel, then followed a 10-year period of relatively little change. Then in 1849, he noted another cycle of variability, which peaked in 1852. This pattern of periodicity and then calm seemed to repeat itself in the more recent observations. It is now thought that there are two active cycles, one lasting 400 days and one longer cycle lasting 2100 days. The star itself seems to have a non-uniform surface and seems to have some bright patches on the photosphere. This could be caused by a very large tuft or uneven tuft formation. Coupled with this, the star surface is thought to contract and expand. In 2009, a study was performed on the infrared images and they were able to conclude that between then and 1993, the star had shrunk 15% without any significant change to the brightness of the star. In 2009, ESO released images taken from the VLTI which showed a vast plume of gas extending some 30 astronomical units from the star into the surrounding atmosphere. And this plume was equal to the distance between the Sun and Neptune. Astronomers have identified at least six of these shells surrounding Betelgeuse. The atmosphere surrounding the photosphere has strong lines of emission rather than absorption, indicating that the atmosphere is not ionised. And this atmosphere has been seen moving from and towards the star. And as a result, only about 13% of the star's radiant energy is emitted in the form of visible light. If human eyes were capable of seeing the whole spectrum, Betelgeuse would appear as the brightest star in the night sky. And this also makes it difficult to obtain surface temperature readings. Betelgeuse is thought to rotate very slowly, taking about eight and a half years to turn on its axis. And this compares to, on average, about 28 days for our sun. Studies of the atmosphere surrounding the star have shown that it is composed of water vapour and carbon monoxide. Interestingly, the Sanskrit name for Betelgeuse is Ardra, meaning the moist one. Several reports in the 1960s and 80s suggested that the star might have a companion, but more recent observations have not been able to find any evidence to back this up. It is therefore thought that Betelgeuse is an isolated star, and due to this, obtaining readings for its mass are extremely complex and rely on theoretical modelling. 
And these have estimated that the mass is somewhere between 9.5 and 21 solar masses. Now according to these models that makes the star only about 10 million years old. And if we were to consider this as an electric star, both the mass and its age would be very different, but we will come back to that in a short while. Now Betelgeuse's motion may be one of the biggest clues to its mystery and to the nature of our universe. Starting from its current position and projecting its current motion backwards and assuming the 10 million year lifespan of the star, you would find Betelgeuse originated far outside of the galactic plane. And this is of course completely implausible. Its proper motion is higher than normal for our local stars at around 30 kilometers per second. Now could this motion be due to the twisting Birkeland currents? As we have discussed in the precession series, Birkeland currents may form like bezel functions and snake up and down through the galactic plane. And this would make it seem like its path backwards was outside of the galactic plane, when in fact it was following a curve. Electric red giant stars are formed because they cannot satisfy their requirement for electrons from the surrounding plasma. So the star expands the surface area over which it collects electrons by growing a larger plasma sheath. As it does, the electric field starts to intensify and this causes more ionization to occur and the whole sheath starts to glow red. This increased electric field will also cause a huge increase in the outflowing protons. And this is what we would see as the solar wind. When we examine the structure of the atmosphere of Betelgeuse, it is clear that it is non-uniform, but seems to extend in large plumes that extend from the surface. And these have been observed to contain carbon and nitrogen and extend in a southwest direction. These types of electric stars do not have a mechanism to manage changes in incoming current density easily. This means that they are forced to expand and contract in order to accommodate any changes in the current. And over the last 15 years its diameter has steadily shrunk, but its brightness has not. If a greater current is fed into it, then this is what we would expect to see. A greater electric field would mean a smaller surface area is required. So how do we explain the variability in the past and the sudden dimming? Part of the reason, I believe, is tied to its higher motion compared to other stars. I covered a few weeks ago the story of the vanishing stars, and note that these stars were also red stars, maybe not red giants, but they also had a higher proper motion than normal. And I think that this motion is causing the stars to receive a more variable inflowing current, possibly due to its motion through the existing Birkeland current, but also possibly because of its location in a more twisted part of a Birkeland current. Another factor that needs to be considered is the fact that the photosphere is surrounded by a significant amount of non-ionized gas. As we have seen from the Sapphire experiment, the gas surrounding the star has a significant effect on its ability to enter glow mode. And as I pointed out in the Vanishing Star video, it may also be possible that this higher proper motion is pushing the star through various layers of a larger Birkeland current. And these layers may well contain non-ionized gases due to the Markland convection. So could the periodicity be related to this motion through these layers? It may be a combination of both of these factors. Again, how would we explain the sudden dimming compared to its contraction and staying steady? And to me, this is nothing more than its normal behavior. It goes through these periodic variations from brightness to dim to brightness to dim. And that's what we're seeing. Another important point to consider is the location of Betelgeuse. It is a local star. And if you have watched the precession series, you will be familiar with a structure called the local chimney. And this is a large structure that we sit on the edge of. And this is possibly part of a large stellar Birkeland current which passes up and down through the galactic plane, weaving up and down. Some event in the past caused a huge Z-pinch explosion to occur, creating the structure and expanding the ghoul belt, leaving the Pleiades at the centre of this chimney structure. Betelgeuse sits within this chimney structure as well. When we examine the ghoul belt, which is expanding away from this area, we see that they are all blue stars. 
And when we examine the edge of the chimney, we see there are variations in the types of stars that we see. And I believe that there is a relationship that is maybe at this point not very obvious, which is to do with their position in the Gould Belt, and their position within a Birkeland current, and also their velocity. And that those three factors may well determine the brightness of the star, the type of star it is, and whether or not it varies. Now it is important to point out that the swings that we have seen in the luminosity for Betelgeuse is nothing extreme in terms of previous brightening and dimming events. The star is not under extreme electrical stresses, so I do not expect any nova or even supernova events to occur on Betelgeuse anytime soon. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.